Welcome back, Mangler 3 I'm here. We're going to continue with Final Fantasy XIV. We're trying to choose a kingdom, but I did have that ticket to get uh, a chocobo to be able to race, so I went ahead and got there. So I'll start out with that, and then I'll continue with looking for choosing a kingdom. We're a one third of the way through that. So I made a couple changes on the screen. So let me know uh, if it's worse or better than yesterday. Yesterday was a little choppy, so let me know how it goes. Um, We'll see how how it is so far. So far it looks okay. So sounds and looks pretty good. Our promising new jockey returns, bearing his fledgling Chocobo's registration form, I trust. But of course, one so keen to join the race of honor champions would not be so foolish as to misplace essential documentation. Our race co Chocobo creator is responsible for registering new fledglings. Present your form to hit her and she will guide you through the process. And when the final bureaucratic hurdle has been surmounted, return to me and I shall arrange your debut. Participate races first speak with the trainer and register the fledgling. Then speak to the registrar and register for the return fund. the trainer. I believe Katarine provided you with a registration form for your race chocobo. Choose a name. You can select one or a combination of the available one. And you can also omit the second one. Okay, right, so the first one, I can't even think about this, what could it be? Hey, it's got firecracker. Is it, do we have pumpkin? Can we do pumpkin firecracker? I bet we can because it wouldn't let me choose a name or anything like that. Alright, so Firecracker on battle. I wonder if we can have more than one or if I just have exactly one or two. I feel like in FF7 it's a little more. I'm going to use Firecracker by itself. Alright, we got you. Firecracker is now eligible to participate in sanctioned Chocobo races. However, I fear you're not quite qualified to do so yet. Pray speak to the registrar about the training course. At last, the time has come for you and your race chocobo to take to the track. For training, that is. Enter a race followed by a trainer course for the races. Welcome to the training course. Damn 
going to decrease it more quickly while accelerating. Continue to accelerate and observe the effects. Once the stamina is completed, the speed will drop. If we push too hard, we'll get labored, lathered, and loose stamina. Down to decelerate. Which classes you can enter determined by the rating. Rank rating, which is 11, in case you're unaware. The name of the class is open only for the most inexperienced. You will quickly outgrow it. As your triple rating increases, you'll find yourself competing as more far more experienced on those triple roles. The rewards you receive make up increased difficulty. Train them well, spitters. Pull the ever. Spinners pull the ever in your fear. Wow. <laughs> you can register for race at any time speaking to the race trickle or with duty finder. Okay, so we don't have to go find you, we can just go to the duty thing. Duty finder. Let's put the duty finder on the Easier. To register in your race. Class or training? Let's do class. Duty roulette. Using the duty roulette, you'll be assigned to a random duty from among those you might want. In return for leveling, leaving your destination in the hands of fate, you get enhanced rewards. Furthermore, should you happen to be an adventurer in need, that is to say your role is in short supply, you will receive additional bonus. Okay, we can do random. Oh, I just think it'll happen sooner. Doesn't seem all of this one takes. I guess we can start moving towards where else we need to go. We also need to go to Olda and Lominsa. Lominsa and Lominsa. Hey, we're up. That was great. Alright. Left, right, and items. And jump. Forward and back.
grab them all. First place! Perfect! Go Firecracker! Five thousand MGP! And I get a bonus. Extra prize money. Breaking the maiden rank up. Rank 5. What was that before? Alright. I think we're done with Chocobos for now. I'm trying to find the entrance. Where's the entrance? Um, not here. There's like a little... There, right here. Entrance. Card squares, yeah. I played um, the card game a couple times, got a couple new cards, nothing too exciting. Got like a card called Chocobo, and no, a card called Moogle. That's it, not Chocobo, Moogle. Moogle, I think, some people call it. Alright. Actually, there was a tournament I wanted to enter into. If, if the tournament's available, I want to do that otherwise. Here it is. Sign up for tournament. Oh, not ready. Do the schedule. Every two hours. Okay. Bad timing, that's it. Alright. Alright, we need a flight. We're gonna fly to hold up. Passage to hold up. Oh, a free flight. Thank you very much. go to the Royal Promenade, which I think is in Custom Strip. Just to guess. started out in Olda. They're gonna try to win us over. They showed us uh, Redania earlier, that was last stream, and now they're gonna show us Olda. Behold, tis the 
of Tana Nanamo herself! And Roban as well! This is fun. Hark you, souls of flame, drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore! Since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul Dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold. Whereby the grace and glory of Naldar have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered. I speak of Uldar! There, at the Flame General's back, flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters, that they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guests. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, downtrodden, and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. It is but a slow death. Our enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Garleans make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you, Lie not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames. Seek not to prosper from Ulda, but to restore her to prosperity. As the realm prospers, so shall Ulda. As Ulda prospers, so shall her people. Ya yeah, for Ulda! Together we are one. Your grace. Raban? Raban? People of Ulda, I, Nanimo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measure that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. 
all the true wealth of Ulda lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Ulda, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. Long live Nanamo! Glory to the Sultana! For victory and fortune, stride fearless into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn! Okay. Forsooth! The time is now! I believe! I fancy believe. meeting you again. Those guys are everywhere. The Oldens have a long history of conflict with the Amalja, the beast tribe that worships the primal Ifrit. Judging by your look of distaste, I take it you would count for them. The Oldens do not shy out from confrontation. If aught threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So have they dealt with Ifrit so far. Smoldering his flames each time he steals the light. Yet he is but one of several problems. Though they have been quite quiet these past few years, the Garleans have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees continue to arrive in droves, and Uldan has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanate coffers are bottomless. And even assuming they had the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of Ifrit. It has been observed that the Amalja are summoning him with ever increasing frequency. Even every time they do so, the Oldens send their forces to smite the primal, and though they invariably succeed, every victory is fought with blood. It is a war of attrition which they cannot well sustain. Small wonder that, then that the immortal flames are eager to recruit more members. At such a desperate hour, an adventurer of your experience would be most welcome addition to their ranks. For their sake, I hope that the flame general's words struck a chord with you. Alright, now we go to the other one. That was quick. We'll just go right back into the airship. Fly to Minsa to Minsa. percent of my money. The Laments is the one with a lot of fishing and boats and
think Bulwar Fall said Steve Road. Drowning Wench is probably at the bottom. Service, be quick. The Admiral is due to give her address at any moment. Proceed to the state room. The Garlians are another matter altogether. So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty crimson standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. Seven hundred summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the mother of oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. The Crimson Field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates, while the Black Longship represents a pirate vessel. When the Garlean Empire marched upon Eorzea, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our Grand Company was reborn. All answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda mm -hmm. to Hilthier's bloody executioners. And together, we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartano. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage. Yet many of ours did not survive. Join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned to the sea. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom. Much as the beast tribes have. Small wonder. Beneath the surface one would struggle to tell them apart. So these are like the freedom loving. The it has been five communist. long years since the calamity struck. Five long years of what tireless say, rebuilding. Freedom Yet loving. still the wounds of the what calamity fester and weep. Tree huggers. But when I stand atop the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore seeking blood for their accursed god. Those fishbuck bastards. While the mines of Ogomoro spew forth kobolds who push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crash against our creaking hull. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Garlean Empire. Even now the Kurs fly their flags within our borders. 
doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded, yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us. One bearing that will bring us victory over the Beast Hordes and the Empire both, and see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom, and stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well, a crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, gather beneath the undying crimson standard and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the Navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves till sea swallows all. Gather the lads! Oh, where's me cutlass? I'll follow ye to the seven hells, Admiral! Fancy meeting you again. As the Admiral mentioned your address, you're played by a dude first of the Fish Lakes of again. <clears throat> As if the Beast Tribe's presence weren't troublesome enough, the Garleans have also chosen to erect a fortress right in the Lomensen's backyard. And that is to say, not of eternal strife, as a nation of pirates, there is no end to the blood feuds between the various factions. And while they fight amongst themselves, the Garleans wet their blades and watch. If the Lamensons are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside and the primal threat dealt with once and for all. To this end, I expect that they will soon take decisive action against the Beast Tribes. Mark my words, the Maelstrom Scanner will be drenched a deeper shade of Crimson Aragorn. That a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. Difference or if it doesn't matter. Really yeah, yeah. Missinger. Minfilia says. Mangler, this is Minfilia. You are well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final remembrance service is now concluded? A moment ago, you say. What a coincidence. Jesting aside, I trust you remember our guests from the Grand Companies. Well, Delighted though we are to have them here at the Walking Sands, it would not do it would not do to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. I'm sure. Hurry back. Alright, we have a ticket so we can go back quick and a couple of days. Now we have to decide who should we pick? Hmm. Should we go with the fire guys, the big communists? Should we go with the freedom boat people, or should we go with the tree hugging vegans? Gradini. I think there's advantages of each one. Because I'm a mage, and the mage headquarters are in 
Gradini, I think I'm gonna lean towards the gardens. The Gradini. Thinking that would be good. I picked up this minion called Wind Up Leader and bought it earlier this morning. It costed like two and I had to four or five so I'm kind of reward to me. And I was like, hmm, I'll have to make sure I try it so I go to my It's minions are those things that follow you around. If you ever watch it, it feels like Mangler, where the Grand Company's leader's words is illuminating as you hoped. I, each nation is beset with problems. I trust that you now see now why your services are in such demand. Would that you were there were more of you, Mangler. But you must be tired from your journey. We don't why don't you rest a while and take a moment to reflect on your decision? Once your mind's made up, pray give the Grand Company officers your answer. And that pay for my trip right there. Crazy rewards. I bet I love them up too. <sighs> the gods only know what Grand Company our adventurer friend will keep. The wheels of change are in motion regardless. Brother, are you certain this course is best? Whatever do you mean, dear sister? The so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard waving rallies. As though the Calamity and Seventh Umbral Era warranted scarcely a mention. Well, of course they were standard waving rallies. Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact, that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the Beast Tribes and their primals do little to alleviate the pain. So, the task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I need to find it. You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say, we will see eye to eye. I should hope so. M -m my lady! We are to escort you! Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Maybe I'll find out. Maybe. Uh, 
Ah, I take it the Elder Seed Seer's words touched your heart. Have you resolved to entwine your destiny to that of the two in the air? Flame must be... Yeah, these must be the water people, so I'm gonna go with these guys. Or the twin adder, the name. Chosen wisely, my friend, the Elder Seed Seer will be overjoyed. Without fur further ado, let us speak of, of practical matters. In order to complete the enrollment procedure, you must report to the headquarters in Grenadia. The adder's nest. The building you seek stands in the southern part of the city, now called New Grenadia. Give your name to the personnel officer there and he'll guide you through the formalities. I have no doubt but that your deeds will bring great honor to our order. When next we meet in Gridania, I shall be proud to call you brother. I'll be there in 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do the wind up reading. You can see what that looks like. The old uh, wide uh, leader would also look pretty funny. The big guy with the little midget on his shoulder. Aha, I'm not affiliated yet. Let's see if I can walk here. Yes, headquarters of the Order of the Twin Adder. Ever do I we welcome they who would toil in the Elemental's name for the good of the Forest Nation. They look like they're wearing the green coats or the firefighter outfits. My name is Mangler Mike. I believe you're expecting me. I'm here to enlist if you will have me. Ah, the great adventurer himself. Yes, our recruitment. Officer sent word that you were on your way. It's a pleasure and an honor book to welcome you to our ranks, friend. Now let me gather together the relevant documentation. Sir! What is it? Report. An urgent message from Emma Amarise Spire, sir. A Highwind Skyways airship has taken fire from Imperial forces in the skies over the East Shroud. The vessel's engines were crippled, sir, and it was forced to make an emergency landing southeast of Nine Ivies. Nine Ivies? Gosh, this could not have come at a worse time. All but a handful of our forces are presently afelt, dealing with the excellent. Nagler, I know full well you have yet to be informally inducted into our ranks but we have an urgent need of your aid. In all likelihood, the airship is bearing civilians, and if the reports are accurate, it will have come down dangerously close to Berlin occupied territory. Please make haste to the area southwest east of Nine Ivies. Locate the airship, ascertain the status of the passengers. On my way. Alright, we could go to Hawthorne Hunt quickly, or we could take a bus. I'm gonna go there just quickly, it's only one minute. I feel like this is where they told me to go to get my chocolate. If you see one around here, let's grab that as well. We'll do two virtual ones. And also, if you get a joke of all the I think you move faster. Look at what Pink is right there. Right?
Nest sent you. How do I know you're not an Imperial spy? You don't even have a uniform. <clears throat> Peace, friend. We mean you no harm. You are an engineer of Garland Ironworks, are you not? We were alerted of your plight and have come to rescue you. And you are Mangler Mike, I presume? I was told to expect an honorary serpent, and my thanks to you for your aid, friend. I have never seen this craft of this design. It must be Garland's work. Is there no end to the man's treachery? The secret of the Magitech belong in Imperial hands. They are not to be squandered on the Orzian savages. Ooh, I see some blood. We are taking this craft back to the fortress. Dismantle it if you must, and bring the engineer. Someone must pay for Garline's crimes. Imperial scouts from Castrum Oriens. They mean to requisition the ship. Wedge, you have to help him. That fool of a Lalafell was hiding inside the tiny Bronco. The tiny Bronco? But isn't that the Ironworks' latest creation? This is the first airship we've built since the Calamity, the first since Master Garland, well, since he went missing. After years of work, she was finally ready for her first test flight, and she was soaring, she really was, till those bastards blasted her out of the sky. Attend me all, the Ironworks' latest creation must not fall into Garland's hands. We shall strike them, swift and sure, and rescue Engineer Wedge. Mangler, I trust we can rely on your support. May the matron watch over us with you. Two ambush, two arms. First time we're fighting on the team in the L.
Okay. I didn't finish him off, but maybe my teammates did. I don't know. I was worrying about healing pigs. Wedge, you should you shouldn't have stayed with the ship. <laughs> Wedge and Biggs from Final Fantasy VII. That was a close one. Too darn close. So how does she look anyway? The auxiliary propeller is a dead loss, but I think we can wring enough thrust from the main propeller to get us airborne. A few minor modifications and we should be able to fly the tiny Bronco home. While you do your work, we shall keep watch over the perimeter. The enemy may yet be lurking nearby. As for you, Mangler, you have more than done your part today. I bid you return to the Adder's Nest and complete your enlistment. I pray there will be no further interruptions. When next we meet, let it be as fellow servants of the Order. I um, just wanted to say sorry, you know, for calling you an Imperial Spy and all that. Got that one wrong, didn't I? Haha. <laughs> Seriously though, if I hadn't been for you and the Twin Outer lads there, we'd be chained up in the dungeon by now. I'm in your debt, friend. We both are. Wedge. Thank you. We're very grateful. Alright, double check, is there any chocobos around here? There's a porter there. Does that mean anything? No, that's the one that calls you to get around. And let me check my list. Do I have any chocobo things? No wonders. Nope. I guess not. I probably have to do something else for it. Of which I'll think. Turn. I'll have to wait for a minute. It's not walking. Maybe if I wind up here. Well, to see you return. Word arrived but moments ago from the team at 990s. Must be worried the two engineers are safely on their way. The lieutenant informs me that you were instrumental in the mission's success. Had you not found Engineer Biggs when you did, and helped us to route the Garland, things might have been very different. And all this before you were even inducted into the order. You are well on your way to carving out a fine career for yourself beneath the twin outer sphere. But without further ado, let us see to your introduction. Well willing, 
there won't be any further interruptions. Okay, we get 300 serpent seals if we do this. The personnel officer stands ready to complete your induction into the ranks. Protocol requires that I apprise you of who we are and what we do, after which I will invite you to swear an oath of your own free will. <clears throat> Order of the Point Outer is the company, Grand Company of Tradini. It brings together the martial, economic, and technological resources of our nation. Now we might stand strong in times of direst adverse adversity. Indeed, our very survival hangs in balance. Our order is formed in the days before the calamity, in readiness to fight the Carlean Empire and to combat the beast tribes and their primals. Needless to say, our struggle continues to this day. Elder Seedseer Khan Esena is the supreme commander of our forces. Under her wise leadership, we protect the people of Britannia and the sanctity of the Twelve's world. As the entwined serpents that grace our standard, let forest horn strive as one with friends from afar to ensure that peace shall ever reign in Virginia. In doing so, in so doing, we honor the will of the elementals, and theirs is the will of the wood. For the tree hugger. Now then, Mangler, I ask that you give us give unto us your oath of allegiance in whatever fashion you see fit. Woods will be done, I shall strike down our enemies and drink of their blood. My life for the elder seeds here. Dot dot dot. I have no idea. The elementals need not words to mirror your heart, and there is no doubt in my own that you will prove a stalwart servant to them. By the power vested in me, I assign you the rank of Serpent Private Third Butt. You are now a man of the Order of the Twin Adder. Go forth, Private. Mangler, and do that which brings peace to the Twelve's wood and honor to our name. Officer of the Order of the Twin Adder contact me with news of your enlistment. My congratulations, Private Mangler. I have no doubt that you are eager to make the acquaintance of our new com your new comrades, but I would ask that you pay a visit to your old ones first. Remember, though you are now a servant of Gridania, you are no less a scion. Pray return to the walking sands at your earliest convenience. There are some friends here who I would very much like you to meet. We shall be waiting. A distant call of a friend in need, perhaps. As you are needed elsewhere, I shall not keep you any longer. I would, however, suggest speaking with High Serpent Commander Vorsail Helen before you depart. He may provide you with assistance on the journey ahead. Now accept the quest, my little chocobo, Twin Adder, by speaking to Vorsail Kilu. This quest must be completed in order to proceed to the, to the end of the game scenario for a realm reborn. Delivery missions unlocked. Grand companies. You're now a member of a grand company. And 
have been assigned the rank of Private Third Class. Your grade company and rank can be confirmed at any time under the Profile tab in the Character Interface when a character in the main menu. They pay their members not in Guild, but in Seals. You can confirm how many Seals you have position on currency in the main menu. Seals can be earned by completing missions. Quartermaster is stationed at each Grand Company Headquarters and will exchange items for Company Seals. Company Seals are only redeemable with the Grand Company that issued them. The Grand Companies of Eorzea are in constant use of supplies and provisions to maintain their daily operations. Adventurers can earn experience points and Company Seals by crafting or gathering the items required and delivering them. Speak to the personnel officer or one of the many officer stations throughout the realm to complete the delivery. Items sought change every day. They can be confirmed by selecting timers located under duty on the Oh, okay. Let's talk to the Chocobo. Alright, we get a Chocobo whistle. Past time you issued a personal trouble. Ah, uh, Private Mingo. I understand you have been working tirelessly in the game you see. You are truly an example of to your fellow servants. But tell me, have you ever felt as though you couldn't get to your destination quickly enough? And perhaps you could do with a swifter pair of legs. If so, you might consider getting a personal chocobo. You have yet to be issued your own bird, am I correct? Given your considerable talents, you should be able to see more than one time at all. Let me, know, let me tell you how to go about it. First, you obtain a circuit chocobo issuance by exchanging company seals with the quartermaster. Once you have this key, present it to our main, our man Singer, and he'll get you a circuit bird. Okay. So, quartermaster, right? Inside exchange. There it is, 200. Alright, I need 200. I have none yet, so let's go get some. This will get me 300. Let's do this one. Okay, that's back at the beginning. We have tickets for this. It's a tiny, tiny little tiny set of Wasted no time putting your skills to work. How do I know? Why the recruitment offer, officer called to regale me with the tale of your heroics. Pride in his voice was palpable. 
The scion we scions are truly fortunate to have you with us, Megwe. Now when we last spoke, I said I wanted you to meet some friends, did I not? Well I neglected to mention that you have already met. Tataru, please show them in. This way, sir. Wedge and Biggs. Thanks again for getting us out of that mess. We owe you our lives. But I don't think we've properly introduced ourselves. I'm Biggs. And I'm... I'm... Gosh, man. Spit it out, will you? Wedge at your service. I am pleased to say that Biggs and Wedge will be staying with us for a while. Magitech-driven contraptions such as airships grow ever more vital to the city-states of Eorzea. As a neutral party, it was judged that we scions should serve as the keepers of this technology. Of course, for this we needed the knowledge of experts, and so we requested the assistance of Garland Ironworks, who very kindly sent us two of their finest engineers. Our happy company continues to grow on behalf of the scions, I bid you welcome to the Walking Sands. Like every soul here, I love Eorzea, and I count myself blessed to have been given this chance to stand with you all and fight for the future of the realm. Never have I known such fulfillment, such happiness. Grab the choke up, but we're already here, so let's go talk to you. Investigate the sylphs. Now, having set aside the formalities, we have a favor to ask of you. Uriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have conducted a study at the behest of the Order of the Twin Adder. Papalimo, Ida, a synopsis, if you would. Our task was to survey the behavior of the Sylphs, a beast tribe indigenous to the Twelveswood. Oh, how to describe them. They look like gizzle greens, floating ones that worship the primal Ramu. <clears throat> Though technically a beast tribe, Sylphs are blessed with a comparatively personable demeanor, conducive to peaceful communication. Offering us an invaluable opportunity to learn what the beast tribes know of the primals. While Ramu's existence is well documented, the Sylphs do not, or perhaps cannot, summon the primal any longer insofar as can be ascertained. Until such time as we know, it would be unwise to assume that the threat posed by the Primal has passed. Which leaves Gridania with the added worry of not knowing what they should be worrying about. <laughs> In that regard, they are hardly alone. What we can say with absolute certainty is that Gridania has its hands full fending off Garuda. Mm. Who, I need hardly remind you, is among the most savage and terrible of all known primals. In short, it is essential that we approach the Sylphs in as diplomatic a manner as possible. Words and actions can be misconstrued. The only sure way to communicate our intentions is the Echo. Winning the Sylph's favor may well bring us a step closer to mitigating the threat of the Primals. Will you help us? I am grateful. Lovely. Well, as much as I'd like to help, I'm afraid I would be of little use to anyone in Gridania. A veritable babe in the woods. Ida and Papalimo, however, should be able to see the forest for the trees. Is that not so, Minfilia? Indeed. You are willing? 
Leave it to me. Us, Ida, us. All right, let's head back. Grab our token. Huh? Serpent Chocobo Schwitz. I just got it fresh out of the printer. Yes, everything appears to be in order. Moment, please. I'll be right back with your Chocobo. Yeah, you got me a big one. Here he is, this fellow's been in high spirits the past few bells. He must have sensed that his master was coming. And now then, to make it official, you want to give your noble steed a name. Twenty alphabetic letters. Alright, we'll call you Pumpkin. The other one's called Firecracker. The racing one. Firecracker. But hey, I dare say he likes his name. Here is your very own Chocobo whistle. Simply blow it and your feathered friend will come bounding to your side. Please do forgive him if he doesn't respond when someone in a crowded city, areas of fear, or monster infested lair. Nokobos are stout hearted creatures, but they have their limits. And lastly, I present you with your Chocobo Rider's license, as is required by law. And that concludes all the formalities. I wish you and your Chocobo long years of fulfilling companionship. Use a whistle to acquire the action to summon your personal chocobo. Unlike rental chocobos, no time limit regulating how long you can remain on their back. Yes! I don't have to pay for these anymore. 
Remember, however, that if there are areas such as highly populated cities and narrow dungeons that your chocobo will refuse to enter. Your, the action to summon the, your chocobo can be set to your hotbar and is located on the mountain guide found in character on the menu. Armor or barding can be equipped via the companion interface situated in the character section of the menu. Are you kidding me? I can bring you armor? Skills. I could be a defender, a healer, and a attacker. Here's the gear. Okay, so he's, right now I've got the Ganyan saddle. That's the sixth gear. Hmm. Alright, so. House that death built. Ooh. I wonder what that is. Alright, let's see if we can call you. Alright, now we can summon. On the menu. Mount unavailable in this location. Okay, I can't quite do it here. I think we'll do the House of Death built at a later time. We gotta do our main quest. I'm not sure if we have time for that, but we'll get started on it. Progeny Horizons. Okay, so they're opening up a lot of quests for us as we're getting these knocked out. We know far too little of this sylphs to lay any worthwhile plans. We must call upon the scions once more if we are to... Ah, big pardons. Tis a terrible habit of mine to think aloud. But tell me, what brings you to the adders next? We come in peace, a pup no longer. Whoa! 1400, that's a ton. I won't do that right now. I'll do the main quest, but I can come back and anything. Oh, there's also a triple triad challenge. Aw, oh, lots of rewards, but. Um, I'm tempted. I'll do one challenge. Ascension, you need to get stronger if you have more than a ton. So these guys can. I think we have a good The zeal I'd like to see from an enterprising young serpent. Good evening, Commander. Sorry to disappoint you, but other business brings us here today. Ida and Papalimo, always a pleasure to see the two of you. My men tell me your quest in the name of the Scions of the Quite so, Commander. A little bird told us that the twin adder was in need of our adventure. 
crown crowds. Aye, your little bird seems true. No doubt you've heard that we're investigating the sylphs. That curious tri beast tribe that calls the depths of the Twelfth's Woods home. Twelfth's Wood home. The sylphs are, for the most part, a peaceable bunch, much to the delight of the Elder Seedseer, who has no desire to see her people embroiled in yet another fruitless war. The twin adders of the same mind, and tis precisely for the reason that these sylphs' relation to the primal Ramu has raised the flag of warning amongst our ranks. Friendly as they may appear, beasts men will be beast men. Should there be even a sliver of a chance that the summoning of the primal might disturb the balance between the Dini and the Sylphic, Sylphic tribes, it is a possibility we cannot ignore. Better to be safe than sorry, indeed. Do we strike at Rama, or leave the Sylphs to their own ways? That is the question, yet I find myself lacking ample knowledge to arrive at an answer. Opinions abound within Virginia, but to listen only to one's own is among the greatest mistakes a commander can make. I would hear from the other side, the Sylphs themselves, and seek an impartial party to serve as my liaison. That is where you science come in. The Sylphs of Little Solace remain untempered, and have held many a productive dialogue with our people. I would hear their candid thoughts on their tempered brethren. That said, I urge you to exercise due caution. Selfic tradition and etiquette bear little resemblance to our own. It would not do to have any cross-cultural faux pas get in the way of a productive parlay. En route to Little Solace, you will come upon the Hawthorne Hut. Our officer stationed there can enlighten you as to how to win the Sylphs in favor. May your expedition be a worthwhile one. A friendly part palaver with the Sylphs, this should be a pleasant enough diversion. The Hawthorne Hut, was it? Why, I believe the ferry departing for West Shore Pier should take us straight there. A friendly palaver, indeed. I hope this will be as straightforward as you say, Papa Lulu. Yep. 
right way. A safe purchase, but they never charge you anything. Or maybe they are, I guess. Wonder if I can order call my chocobo here. Yep. Dismounting personal chocobos. Once you're on the back, chocobo icon will appear on the effect bar. You can dismount by right clicking the icon or re clicking the action that you used to mount. Use the whistle to summon speed. Indoors. Indeed, I am Amelaine of the Twin Adder. I understand you're here to learn about the Sylphs, yes? For all of your whimsy, they are a wary lot, particularly since the Empire has come to the Shroud. Earn their trust, however, and they're as friendly as any folk. They have their quirks, but so do we all, no? Would you know more? You do well to speak with the master of this hut, Rolf. He's forgotten more about the Sylphs than I'll ever know. Alright. This is a, basically the start of what looks like another set of quests. I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in the video for now. We'll continue next time. Let's see if anyone else is streaming with the raid. Uh, let's try the Ultramark. Have a wonderful day, everyone. We'll see you guys next time.